Hi guys, I'm Sam from the Unity of Life and you, if you've been watching our latest videos you'll know at the moment we've decided to switch to animal related laws. So in the last video we spoke about the Animal Welfare Act of 2006. So today I'm going to introduce you to something known as Lucy's Law. Uh, and Lucy's Law it sort of comes under the Animal Welfare Act even though it is a separate law. So what I'm going to do is tell you about Lucy and who she was and why this law has come into place. Okay, so let's get started. So when Lucy was rescued from a Welsh puppy farm, she was rescued from a, a, this Welsh puppy farm um, and she was suffering. Okay, so she was this King Charles Cavalier Spaniel and her hips had fused together um, due, and she had a curved spine, she had bald patches and she was also epileptic from all the years of mistreatment. So because she was actually five years old she was probably um, used for breeding and was probably overbred. So she'd been kept in a cave in a cage and she was no longer to have puppies so you know she got to the point where because she had been overbred her body wasn't um allowing her to get pregnant um so she got rehomed by a lady not called lisa gardner I might not be pronouncing her surname right but anyway um and so she decided that something's got to change and she wanted to try and change a lot to try and bring an end to puppy farming. So pet shops and dealers in England will now be banned from selling puppies and kitty, kittens under in the government's plan. So this Lucy's law covers cats as well as dogs even though Lucy was a dog. Uh, so it it was after Lu Lucy's story became focus in the press um, about this law comp and the law that she was trying to change uh, and it was clear from her physical condition that she had been subjected to appalling conditions. However, she, she had, unfortunately she had a very, very short life. She lived to eight years old as she died in 2006. However, the last three years of her life, um, she was filled, it was filled with happiness, love and joy. Um, even though it took a lot of patience to get her to that stage, which is the same for most, if not all, rescue dogs. So, that's a little bit on her. She just from eight years of her life, she only had three years of freedom uh, and only three years has been a normal pampered little pooch. Um, so they decided that they would launch Lucy's year, uh, law a year after she had died as tribute to her and all the breeding dogs that are hidden from the public. Um, the reason I'm talking about certain laws like this, Lucy's Law and the Breeding Act is because one of my roles uh, that I want to do is that it, you may be aware from my introduction video that I want to start up my own business and one of the things that I want to do with that business is to help the general public buy a dog or a cat or whatever animal resourcefully so you're not paying puppy farms okay because puppy farms work on money and if we take the money away from them then there's no reason for them to be um breeding animals because they don't make any money from it because unfortunately a lot of people are really greedy and they care more about money than the animals that they are selling out on and breeding from and they don't even breed them properly so we are going to be talking about um later on how to breed an animal properly um if you're looking to breed your pet my main focus will be on dogs because um I'm just a dog person and um, most of my college work and uni work has always been on some sort of canine um, 
and that's just because of my personal interests but the basis are still going to be the same if you are willing to breed your cats okay or any pet that you may have the basis is still going to be the same so unfortunately lucy's story is not uncommon um and that's actually quite sad that this is quite a common th occurrence uh it's it's absolutely ridiculous it does indeed need to stop because there's just no need for it um and we do end up with a lot of strays and a lot of pressure from rescue centers um so another part of the business would be to help you find a rescue animal if a rescue animal is what you're wanting and hopefully if you've got the right pet whether it's a rescue or if it's it, it's something you've bought from a breeder then hopefully you're going to provide a forever home with that animal and that's going to take some pressure off of the rescue centers because hopefully there will be less animals going into rescue centers which would be nice okay so in 2015, one family in Sussex were tricked by someone selling that they were believed to be a nine-week-old crossbreed puppy on a website. Please, 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 please be careful. If you, I personally wouldn't recommend looking on websites per se to find animals. However, I know with the current climate and the the way that technology moves on i know a lot of people are going onto websites um but there is a problem that people don't know if it's a it's a genuine breeding website or anything like that um so that you know it's what, what you see isn't always what you get um because obviously with technology these days we can photoshop pictures um so we can take a picture of our of an animal and be like this is in perfect condition and this is our perfect little puppies that we are selling and it's not always the case okay um but like i said we are going to touch on these in other videos so it's really important that you stick around for them so they actually spent 470 pounds on max who's a cavapoo so in case you don't know what a cover poo is, it's a cover lurking child mixed with a poodle. Uh, but he turned out to be a different mix entirely. Once again, with these pedigrees, they go for a lot and lot of money. So £470 for a, because he's a crossbreed, isn't that bad. Um, because some pedigrees and some mixed breeds now go for quite a lot of money because they're fashionable and they're like designer dogs which is ridiculous so this is just a quote from the one of the people from the family they said uh, we were so excited to have him home but it was just 17 hours after he arrived it all went wrong 17 hours if you've just got a puppy and something goes wrong within 17 hours and there is some serious problems so if Max wouldn't eat but was drinking constantly and Rebecca called home from work by her husband when the dog became seriously ill. Uh, he was like a wet blanket on the floor. He couldn't even lift his head. He was so weak and he it was heartbreaking, said his honour. So the vet actually diagnosed Max with something called... Um, Megan Oscophy again I might not be pronouncing that right because I'm not a vet these medical terms go over my head uh, so that's basically a condition where the dog isn't able to get food into their stomach uh, so it's not good that, that that generally screams that it's down to the breeding uh, which hasn't been done properly um, and the parents might also have been mistreated especially the mum while she was pregnant so Rebecca, the owner of Max, tried to contact the seller to find out if any other puppies had this condition. Because if they have it, it could be genetic. But her calls were just ignored. Because once they've, you know, they've made their money, they really couldn't give a crap. They don't care about um, your puppy's well-being, okay? Or any of the animals that they're breeding, they don't care about their well-being as long as they can make money from them. Which is very sad and shouldn't be the case okay um it might be a thing in that one day we decide that it's illegal to sell any animal um and therefore if you want to breed them then they must go to a carefree a caring and loving home you know because if there's no money into it then breeding standards would hopefully improve 
So, so back to Rebecca, she had to change her working hours to feed Max liquidized food, which isn't a very good life for any dog. And her husband built him a special chair to help him digest what he's eating. So in case you're not aware of what one of those chairs would look like, it's like a high chair for a child, a human child. However, it makes the dog sit up and it'll have like its front paws up there. So it's like sat on its bum and its back paws and it's sat up straight to help the food go straight from the mouth down the sarcophagus and into the stomach. So the family estimated caring for Max has cost them £5,000 which considering they only spent 470 to get the dog in the first place and that's just on like his vet bills uh, and you know and his special liquidised food because it's not something that you have to go usually buy a pet is horrendous especially when he's only a young dog it's not really that great of a quality of life um oh and it gets even worse because apparently they even brought him from bought him from a seller who they said actually lied about the dog's age health and vaccination history okay if the dog's been vaccinated um by a breeder they should have a vaccinated card from the vet um and if the vet if the breeder's not giving you that then that's a bit of an alarm bell because you're not meant to be getting these puppies until they're about eight weeks old um between eight or ten weeks old so they get the first lots of injections when they're six weeks old and they can have the second when they're eight weeks old um so really from a breeder they should have had at least their first lot of injections if not both sets um it depends on the breeder because like i said some breeders are quite happy for you to take the puppies away at eight weeks old that's the youngest the puppy can be for you um before he can leave its mum um i i do know back when i got my dog oh god uh that was in like 2005 so that 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 was a long time ago it's about 15 16 years now um it people were buying puppies at six weeks old so yeah so uh, according to the rspc here one of the spokespeople said we believe that all puppies and kittens should be born and reared in suitable environments with their mother and should be sold directly from their birthplace so my dog actually wasn't we got her at 10 weeks old uh, and she had been hand reared by a rescue center because their owners did not want the puppies um, because they had just lost their dog who was the the mom she had unfortunately been run over uh, so my dog actually, she was actually a rescue. So the government decided to introduce a landmark new legislation to tackle the low welfare and high volume supply of puppies and kittens by banning their commercial third party sale in England. Is that enough? No, it really isn't. Um, and that's why I think a lot more people need to be educated because people don't seem to quite understand um, the laws that are out there on their pets and everything that they need to know uh, for looking after a pet because it's just, it's not as simple as you think. There's a lot more to it and it is really complicated and that's what I'm trying to achieve with some of these videos. So Lucy's law means that anybody wanting to get a new puppy or kitten in England must now buy direct from a breeder which isn't always a good thing okay or considering adopting from a rescue centre instead we will go through the pros and cons of a rescue centre because there are some animals that do obviously need a lot of patience and a lot of care and will still have a lot of health problems from a rescue centre um, but that's not to say that it's not worth all the hard work in the end it's just something that you need to take into consideration and like i said it's not like you're gonna not encounter these problems if you go straight to a breeder because you still might so a licensed dog breeders are required to show puppies interacting with their mothers in their place of birth. Okay, and we're going to go on to dog licensing, um, breeding license, okay. If a business sells puppies or kittens without a license, 
that you could receive an unlimited fine or be sent to prison for up to six months. Okay. There is loopholes to get around breeding without a license, which we will cover in a later video. So, as we know, Lucy's Law was obviously named after the little King Charles Spaniel that suffered and only lived for three years after um, being rescued. So, there is advice on pet safety on um, a government site, which again, these, these are all laws in the UK, don't forget that. So, the site is called Get Your Pet Safely dot campaign dot gov dot uk however how many people are going to be looking at that site i don't know i don't believe it'll be very many because they overcomplicate things and they don't write things um to, to do on, with the government in a language that everybody can understand um, and what i mean by that it's it's not in like the basic normal english that everybody would speak it's all very high tech um and technical words that people might not necessarily know the meaning from because they don't work for the government they're not a liar they don't come from those kind of backgrounds so anybody looking to buy a report we should look for these warning signs before visiting so research i can't stress this enough you have to do your research you can't just go and buy a, a puppy or a kitten you know these things take time and you have to do research and this is what my business is aiming to do we're aiming to do the research for you take off that pressure um, and we'll do the research for you but we'll also educate you on what we have found um, and we will also help a fluid having a discussion with you to see what breed and animal is better for you okay and um i you know there's at the moment there's only me and i am qualified um like i said i've spent the last six years studying animals and next year i am going on to animal law and welfare into even more detail as a master's degree so i am by this by next year i'm going to be more than qualified to, to help so have a look at the seller's profile and search their name online. If they are advertising many litters from different breeds, then this should be a red flag. Okay, because you really, with breeders, they usually only tend to breed from one breed. Check contact details. Copy and paste the phone number into a search engine. If the number is being used on lots of different adverts, sites and dates, then it is likely... Oh, bad seller it's not a very good person um to be buying your pups from or kittens or any animal um check the animal's age puppies and kittens should never be sold under eight weeks old okay do not buy from anybody advertising a puppy or a kitten under eight weeks old we're going to go through the development of a puppy in a later video and we we'll go into more details on why a puppy or a kitten should not be sold under week eight weeks old okay so check the animal's health records make sure the seller shares all the records of vaccinations fleas worm treatments and like and it's been microchipped before you, you sell okay and when you're visiting make sure the mum is present and you get to meet mum ask if it's possible to even meet dad okay dad's not so important but he still is important so if you can see dad as well as mum then that is absolutely fantastic okay because it's unlikely the, the, the puppy or the kitten was bred there um if mum's not there okay uh, beware of the sellers making excuses as to why mum is not there e.g she's at the vet asleep or she's out for a walk Okay, you want to you want to at least see mum. Um, at the max, you want to be able to see both parents. Okay, and check there isn't a fake mum because most fake mums don't interact with the puppies, as they feel the real mum returning. Watch out for puppies or kittens labelled as rescue, but with much higher than expected price tags. Uh, your best chance if you're going to want a rescue puppy or kitten is to go to a rescue centre. Okay. 
if you feel rushed or pressured into parting with your cash, then that's also a red flag. Because the money should be the last thing on anybody's mind. Health problems observed at purchase are not normal and don't convince and don't be convinced otherwise. So beware of offers to meet somewhere convenient, e.g. a car park or a motorway service or shop front premises common with rented properties just to make sales and sales rooms kept separate from nearby on site property farms. So somebody from the RSPCA They've said over the last decade, the RSPCA staff have dealt with almost 30,000 complaints relating to the illegal puppy trade. Our research has saved dogs from unmanageable cruelty and horrendous conditions. Our vets have tried desperately to save the lives of tiny puppies riddled with worms and plagued with health and behavioural problems. And our carers have nursed dogs back to health, teaching them to trust people again and showing them the love for the first time. We're incredibly pleased the government is introducing a ban on the third puppy sales of puppies and kittens. We believe that this, along with tougher licensing regulations that were introduced in 2018, which still aren't good enough, and better education of the, pu of the public on how to buy puppies, which is what I'm trying to do, uh responsibly will help to crack down this cruel trade we hope these laws will be properly enforced so that all these dogs who are used for breeding and selling will live happy healthy lives where their welfare is prioritized before profits which is why i think we should jack off profits and not have any of them um you should not be able to sell puppies and kittens for any profit at all so the head of the public affairs at kennel of, of the kennel club um which is anybody knows me i'm quite skeptical of the kennel club the kennel club is not my favorite organization i'm i, I don't particularly like the kennel club as such um uh, because they can be downright cruel to some animals as well um but i will be going through that in a later video when i talk about breed specific problems okay so we are delighted that Lucy's law has been introduced. Sadly, too often irresponsible breeders in the UK and abroad have depended on commercial third party sellers like dealers or pet shops to disguise the horrific conditions puppies are bred and brought up into the public, making a huge profit while causing untold suffering. We hope Lucy's Law will help to bring an end to this cruel trade that, as well as improving welfare conditions for puppies, it will also encourage anyone thinking of getting a puppy to really do their research. I cannot stress that enough. Find a responsible bring breeder and bring home a happy, healthy new addition to the family. So... Some TV personality, personality model and animals rights campaign, uh, Lucy Watson, uh, I'm not sure who that is, but you might, uh, said that sadly I was totally unaware of the cruelty involved in the league of third party puppy trade when I unwittingly bought my first dog Derby, a German spritzer, from a licensed pet shop. As a result of his irresponsible breeding, I had witnessed firsthand his lifelong behavioural problems, most likely caused by the lack of adequate socialisation as a result of early separation from mum and litter mates. As well as Digby, sorry, it's, it's Digby, not Darby, um, I have since adopted a crossbreed Marley from an organisation dedicated to rescuing puppies and breeding dogs from puppy farms and will always urge others to do the same. I have been a proud supporter of Lucy's Laws campaign since the very beginning and was even lucky enough to have met the actual rescue cavalier Lucy too. So that's it for today's video. Um, just to sum all that up, basically it is so important that you do do your research before 
buying a pet and it's not even the research into um finding a proper responsible breeder it's also doing your research into finding the correct breed and species for yourself okay and that is what my business once i get that up and running which i'll keep you up to date with is hopefully going to help you out with um because if you've got an energetic lifestyle you don't really want um a dog that's going to sit on your knee and be placid and it's laid back and not really going to do much if you've got an energetic lifestyle you probably really want um a dog or a companion that will go out running with you so something that has high demands in exercise like a husky um however if you are that athletic you may want something that just sits on your lap like a maltese and can be a cute little family pet um it all depends on your lifestyle so you really have to think about that and take that into consideration when you are thinking about buying a any dog or cat or any animal for that matter because it's a huge responsibility and at the very early stages they will take up quite a little bit of time because you can't always leave them on their own for more than like three hours um if you're buying if you're going to have a puppy or a kitten or any baby animal just to take into consideration it is going to be like having a newborn baby in the house uh, it's a little bit less stressful guaranteed but it is gonna still be very similar so please please do your research please like this video comment and share we need to get this world out we need to stop this cruelty okay we can only do stuff by taking one tiny little step at a time because this is a huge problem that's gone on for such a long time that each tiny little step no matter how small the step is it is so significant and it's so very important that we do this um so it is so important that you share these videos and you get this word out um because i want everybody to be educated and know what they're doing when they're buying pets to try and end this cruelty so please like i said do not forget to subscribe you can click on my face which will be down here the playlist of these laws that will be down here and the next video might be up here or the previous one we'll see but there'll be one up here and i'll see you next time bye